Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So as promised, I said I would go over some tips and tricks for the maze in the end of Vault of Stars. So just before you get to the last boss, you're going to have to navigate through these hedges, which is a maze, and you have these three Pacific arenas, which you're going to have to kill waves of mobs and ultimately kill the corpse flowers, which will keep spawning mobs. The quicker you kill those corpse flowers, the quicker you can move on and the ads stop spawning. However, there are some very niche tricks, which you may not have heard of, that you could go and implement and make it a whole lot easier to beat this maze and make it a lot less likely in this scenario where your healer or somebody who gets slowed by these black areas ends up getting swarmed by ads and just dies because they're so immobile you get 10 stacks from these void pools and you literally go nowhere and you also take damage over time while you're in those areas so i'd like to go over how you can exactly prevent that specific mechanic however first up i'll give a quick few tips on the maze in general and how you should play it what i do recommend is that you have your traditional setup with a tank a healer and three dps now your three dps characters need to be going into the maze on their aoe builds and taking as many like stun powers as they can now here on my rogue i can afford not to and thus i'm not using smoke bomb but it's highly recommended that you do unless you're running with a more experienced group and then i'm running with like like a blitz on my whisper knife just to output a little bit more damage otherwise try and stick together as a group at the edge of the arena by the hedge you stick together the tank will be out floating about a little bit further so as to make sure he's getting the attention of the ads first keep aware that your healer the more he or she heals the more aggro she will generate and even if nobody's hit a mob that mob will target the healer because she has the most threat because nobody has hit the mob yet so be aware of that and that's why you kind of group up together so that one or two of you might get hit but at least you'll be able to be all close to each other that you can kill the ads as quickly as possible as soon as they get close to you and otherwise the tank's a little bit out there healers keeping an eye out on them and he's generally the first guy who can like hit the ads and thus make sure he has the aggro and you do that and as soon as the corpse flowers spawn you're rotating around with each other and killing each corpse flower as you go try and kill the middle one first because there's no point in having that sitting there and spawning ads all the time and otherwise make sure you time your powers right the storyteller journal the envenomed is like a really good one for dps to be using here it'll have a damage over time effect but the initial stun is huge especially when there's a, like a big group of mobs and you stun them all and then you can move up close to them and use your encounter powers and kill them you can see with my demonstration here on like my rogue you may have seen that I'm a little bit more reckless and that comes with experience as well just play a bit more cautiously don't like damage greed because you'll end up just killing yourself if you're way out there trying to hunt down mobs and then you just get like two hit by some nasty mob and you're dead and the healers not keep an eye on you because you're way off from the group so these void pools you can see again the clip here where we just have these void pools they're moving around you also get the ones that are stationary spawn under your feet those are the most annoying ones and essentially you take damage over time while within them and you end up moving so slow now how to prevent these well first you'll go into their initial area and you'll just kill your mobs you won't have any black void pool there however once you go through your hedge there are two ways you will spawn you'll spawn in one area or the second area well both areas have an exit door and you'll want to go through that however this middle area is the most important this middle area is where you both group up the group that spawns on let's say the right side where there's a group of mobs right beside you this is the most important area and ideally you would have an artifact that can stun you could have a encounter power that can stun and on the very right side or left side depending on which side you're looking at on the hedge there there is a warlock mob and this warlock will cast a power and if he manages to cast this in time he will create these void pools underneath your feet every now and again they will keep spawning under your feet give you the slow effect and the damage over time so i'll give this to you real slow so i enter through into the area I'm actually just ignoring these three group of ads because I know I need to kill the warlock ASAP. So I use my storyteller journal. You can see the warlock there. We go back a little bit and we pause it and you can see 
Elven Warlock. Clearly they're outlined by my artifact, which I'm just casting. We cast it and it stuns the guy. And then I'm not exactly sure where he is, but I'm just using my AOE powers. And that goes and kills the Warlock. And we don't get any Void Pools spawning under our feet whatsoever. And here's another example. Yes, you just saw that, right? There is a trick where you can jump up on top of here and roll over if you have that said mechanic. If you don't, well, you got to go through the door. Here, I do just kill the three adds and my teammates do end up going through the area. You can see, and I'm not aware of this warlock guy, which I've just hit now. And he goes and spawns the area by the door. You can see Nami is stuck there because the area has spawned. She's taking damage over time and you can see on the buff bar there on the left you get those slow effects and overall it can result in the run failing because these areas make you go all really slow you can see even i am here affected of it when i only have like six stacks you can get up to 10 stacks and you're super slow and these areas cause also big pain for your healer and unfortunately nami ends up with like 10 of these stacks she's moving really slowly and we're trying to keep on top of these ads I'm also getting stacks as well, but it just ends up too much and there you go Our healer dies swarmed by ads and those void areas just do not help and this can end up in a complete fail for your hardcore Voss run So I would recommend again once you finished your first arena I'm just switching to my smoke bomb here and we head through the hedge and you enter this first area here You could be in this one or you can be in the other one and I'm a rogue here, fairly reckless. I can just kill all the ads there without the backup of a tank or a healer. Smoke bomb would help, but I'm saving that. And then we can go and head through this doorway. Again, you can also use the trick of jumping and rolling over it. And I'd simply go in stealth here, roll, avoid those ads, use my artifact, stun this elven warlock, and then use my powers and make sure to kill him ASAP. And then we don't get any of those void areas spawning under our feet at all for the entire run. Another trick is when you go on and enter this third arena, there is a second warlock. You can see we have all the ads here and here's the elven warlock. You want to kill that one ASAP as well. If you do not kill this guy, he will also spawn those void areas. You can see here we did kill him. But again, some of your groups might not be quick enough to kill that warlock. We wait here for everybody. I'm looking at companions and I, I don't know why, but one of the DPS go and aggro all of those enemies. But you can see I'm on the warlock right there. If this warlock casts his power, which we can see he's doing, and he go ahead and he does so, we can see a little bit later in the same arena when we get these corpse flowers spawning, we end up getting these void areas that rotate around they don't spawn under your feet and you can see ones there to the left not impacting us too much since again they don't spawn under your feet they'll just rotate around but at this point we have two of them now we don't have the one spawning under our feet they're just the moving ones and they occur from that second warlock again that warlock is just here in the third arena he's in the very center again you can do the same trick stun him and just kill him ASAP. And once he's dead, you won't get any void pools whatsoever. And again, that's for the first warlock, which is again, just after the first arena, you're killing your group of mobs in this first area. Then you're going and you're heading through your doorway. And then like here, we have these group of mobs, which are just avoiding. Fortunately, we can do that, but you can also just dodge them and we're killing that warlock just there. And again, he's in this group of mobs. You can see the other guys haven't gone through the door yet. And this guy, this warlock, as soon as you enter combat, will cast that void pools under your feet if you do not kill him ASAP. So overall, hopefully that has been somewhat insightful with regards to my tips and tricks with the maze. It can be the most tricky part in the entire dungeon, especially on hardcore, for nobody to die. The other bosses just simply have mechanics, you do them right and no problem. There can be a lot of RNG in these maze arenas since these archers, these warriors can deal massive amounts of damage on just one or two hits and you could have two of them hitting you at the same time and you're gone. So you need to be really cautious and careful, stick to your healer, stick to your group and your tank should be out there a bit 
aggroing the mobs first and then bringing them to the DPS and otherwise you just kill them all together and ideally your group does have a decent amount of CC along with area of effect damage. So with that said, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of my channel members for helping me keep my channel going and if I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like and if you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.